Last week on Food Journey, we took a deeper look at pepper and its place in African cuisine. In part two today, it's all about spice. So welcome back Azaz, our kitchen butterfly, back to Food Journey, where we are talking about spices today. Last episode, it was heat. Now I'm very excited because of course you've got a huge array of spices here for us to look at, talk about, and perchance taste some as well. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. You're very, very welcome. Now, the first thing I've got to do is, is ask you about this little thing that's been sitting in your fridge for a week. Shall we try? Okay, yes, we shall. And I am opening them right up here. Mm. Press the sniff. Oh, incredibly Divine. fragrant. And you can see the color has changed here. The vinegar is darker. Mm -hmm. Which one should we try? I'd like to try one of the longer ones. Oh, so good for you. A green yes. One. That one. And that one has um, a split down the side mm -hmm. so that the actual peppery taste is getting in. You're brave doing a big piece like that. Okay, I will I'm too. Gonna I'm going to cut a small piece. Okay, that's good. good. I'm liking it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. <coughs> I got a, a punch there, but afterwards it's just pure pickle, pickle goodness. Crunchy, mm -hmm. slight sweetness to start with, mm. then the heat, and it's unfurling. Yeah, it's still coming. So you have the cold from the fridge. Right. But then you have the heat from the peppers Look and it's, it's a wonderful interplay. Mm, delicious. Should we have one more? This, this would bite? be really, really nice in a salad and in rice. Yes. I want to drizzle that liquid in rice. In fact, that's what my grandma used rice. to do. She used to drizzle that lovely vinegary, mm. peppery sauce on fish, fried fish. Okay, I'll do one more. Sweet, sour, crunchy, mm. hot. Lovely. Fresh. Mm. So we've done that. So everybody go home and try this. I like it. I really like them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yay. Do. Okay. I'm all set for Christmas. Yes, yes, yes. So let's have a look at these wonderful spices. You know, people always talk about um, spice and heat mm -hmm. in the same vein. Is it necessary to categorize the two? Does it matter? When both are used... There's a tendency to dismiss the cuisine as being too hot. Whereas if people understand the nuance in spice, and when people say spicy, what, what that could mean, the breadth of options of sweet and floral and earthy and woody and warming and um, citrusy and clean and mentally, then people would, I feel like, give more room or more opportunity to actually try out Nigerian and West African and other African cuisines. Mm -hmm. So it's important to distinguish between pepper and spice. Today's beautiful array of spices are displayed in different states of readiness, raw, dried, and toasted. They represent an elevation and celebration of taste values and are an absolute playground for experimentation for our traditional dishes and new original recipes as we'll learn today. Maybe you could point me in a direction, so to speak. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about prekese, yes. Aiden fruit. Um, we you have it one. whole, mm -hmm. but we also have the flesh from mm -hmm. the pods. Inside. So each pod has two stiff wings and two soft wings. The soft wings are edible. And you basically, they basically slice off the soft wings and bring out the, some kind of pulp on the inside. And that pulp is dried. Mm -hmm. It can be fermented. And honestly, it's the most amazing smell. It does smell nice. Let's have a smell. It smells almost like candy, almost licoricely, like something I want to... You know, yeah. the first time my children smelled it, mm -hmm. one of them said caramel, the other one yeah. said toffee, mm -hmm. someone said brown butter, right? nutty. Yes. Yes. So if, for me, when I talk about spice, I'm talking about this 
multiple dimensions of flavor and, and scents. Mm -hmm. um, so you have, you have earthy, you have sweet, like the mm -hmm. sweet smell actually comes through. Mm -hmm. Um, you have sweet, you have nutty, you have woody, you have floral. You know, there's just multiple layers of flavor, as mm. opposed to pepper, which one might consider as a single dimension with heat. I've just chewed this. I've just taken a yeah, little bite of this, a little tiny bite. I'm gonna do it again, and it honestly tastes almost like a date mm -hmm. in a way as well. Mm -hmm. Feels like I could just use it like this, or candy it, or something like that. One thing about this Precocet though, it is used as um, an appetite stimulant. So you find that if you are chewing on this later on today, you're gonna be eating oh, oh, it's <laughs> oh, like good, a horse. It's a good thing we're cooking something mm -hmm. that will fill us up. Select one spice that you'd like to get more familiar with. Exactly. Um, think of if there are other similar spices in other cuisines and look at how they use them. So for instance, nutmeg, if we were, if we wanted to use the calabash nutmeg, which is ah. the African nutmeg popularly used in pepper soup space, I think of how nutmeg is used in other parts of the world. So in creamy sauces, in bakes, um, in pies, but also in simple things like pancakes, which most people make. So I'd swap the regular nutmeg for the calabash nutmeg. And we're talking about this right here, aren't we? Yeah. One is in the shell. In the shell, and one isn't. The left is in the shell, the right is deshelled and toasted. And that really brings out all the edible and the essential oils and it's just it's just a beautiful warm flavour. I'd use it in puff puff. Ah. Right? Because regular nutmeg is used in puff puff. So exactly. I'd use it I'd use it in puff puff. So start by spice by spice, one. and then exploring a, a variety of uses. You know, it's a little bit of testing and seeing what you're comfortable with. But I also think that some of them can move out of savory domains and into go to the sweet, sweet domains. domains. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of sweet, yep. I have to get my hands on Woo! this kilichi, which everybody, we have been actually chewing. <laughs> as you, as you can tell. Yes, the edges. <laughs> okay, so now the reason why I picked this is because with kilichi, it's dried meat, dried in the sun. Yes. And spices are beaten into it. Now you can clearly see pepper here. Yep. Um, but this is a different color to this. And I'm wondering, is there any sweetness in this? Sometimes I notice that there's, I've noticed that people are now putting a little bit of honey or sure. something in there. So I think for the longest time, they've always put just a touch, but now I'm noticing, you know, some people have really sweet kilichi and right. some people just have moderately mm -hmm. sweetened kilishi. Should we try this? Yes. Again? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go for this one because I, I've had a... No, actually, I had a little piece of this. How do I okay. break this off? Okay, kilishi, cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this mm -hmm. has sweetness to it. I more than this. Much more. Mm -hmm. Sweetness. Sugar and Something spice else. and pepper all working together. Delightful. And it keeps developing, doesn't it? Every little chew. It just builds. Just deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. So this is the regular kirishi, mm -hmm. made with pepper and spices, cloves, um, Cuba pepper. Now this mm -hmm. has a bit of tiger nut. Oh, interesting. Ground, liquefied, mm -hmm. and spread. And that's what gives it the color. Let's look at some of the other spices. This looks like locust beans. It is locust beans. Toasted. Toasted. It has almost a coffee flavor. It looks a bit like mm -hmm. coffee too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. And then we met this last time. This was our, our um, wintia. And then you've got this in another form here today. Here. The wintia. And this has had the seeds, I believe, removed and mm -hmm. it's sort of been pounded out. Mm-hmm. We have, what else? Um, alligator pepper. Right. This because is the, the pod. pod looks like the skin of an alligator. alligator. And it, it's also known as grains of paradise across the world. Mm. The seeds kind of look like pyramids. They do. A little bit, A yeah. A little bit. A That's, uh -huh. the pairing of this is used in banga soup. 
from the Niger Delta. Right. Now, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. today our spice trial is going to be making banga soup from scratch. Yep. So already in the kitchen, we've had boiling some palm fruit, I'll call it, mm -hmm. and that's been washed and put on the stove to boil. The next stage is going to be taking off the heat, straining out the water, pounding, mm. and getting out the palm liquid from that, right. and then cooking that down with spices and Delicious. seafood. <gasps> what kind of seafood do you think goes with banga soup the best? Honestly, the classic combination from my mom's village, of where my mom comes from, Isoko in the south of Nigeria, is fresh fish and prawns. Oh, lovely. And you take out the fresh prawn heads, you blitz them down, strain that into the liquid, and it gives it the most wonderful seafood essence. I love that. And thickens it as well. So a bit of a bisque technique. Yes. Like Whereas you would use for a bouillabaisse, for instance. But they, they would uh, first fry off almost with some, some vegetables and other things. Um, aromatics, and then crush that. And, Bef and then strain we, it. Would we do that? We could, we could do, that's mm. not the way my mom taught me, but right. we, could, we could do that. Mm -hmm. It's just, for me, it's about the intensity of the flavor. How do we extract the most flavor from the heads to get that real briny, sweet, salty seafood essence? Dive into the sea feel. Just that. The ingredients for the palm soup are varied and exciting. We're using fresh palm fruit, but there's the tinned as well, if you prefer. Licorice root, lemongrass, and an array of beautiful seafood. Two other things here that look really interesting. Also That's bits of bark. Licorice of root. Okay. Licorice, licorice root. root. So does that mean that this is, has been under the ground? Well, generally, smells nice. the stems are also talked of as licorice mm -hmm. root. So the stems or, you know, young roots, um, and that's used in banga. Sometimes people scrape off the bark and blend that. Sometimes really? people immerse the whole stick in the pot and oh, wow. reuse so it. Leaches out. Precisely. Flavor. So this one. This also smells like a little bit like cinnamon. Yeah. Maybe just a different, yeah, different um, mm. strain. So people or different asking, variety. Are we actually eating wood when we're eating these things, or we're we're infusing the flavor in different preparations? Right. But I do chew cinnamon, so in a sense, I Could kind do. of am in a way. Okay. There's something else that I wanted to look at because this is going to be involved in the banga soup today. Mm -hmm. So we've got two little tiny spices that look sort of the same. Yeah. What's this one? So this is atako, mm -hmm. ataiko. 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 It has a very mentholy flavor. This it's crusty and shiny on the outside, but the flavor inside is just mentholy, sweet, a bit of bitterness, mm -hmm. really aromatic. And this one? Rigije. It's a flat seed, tiny flat seed and it kind of has similar flavors to the ataiko and right. they pair very well together. So are these ground together? Yes, they're, they're combined. In? No, they're mm -hmm. combined in certain proportions and ground together. You mentioned to me that this particular one um, is difficult to, is expensive. Extremely expensive. Yeah, I'm not used to an African spice actually being expensive. Mm -hmm. Three seeds for two hundred. Uh, three seeds for twenty naira. So quite three a, seeds. Three, literally, they will count out three seeds for you. Uh -uh, for twenty naira. For twenty naira. So that means you gotta like save up for these. Well, <laughs> so that's you, twenty naira, folks. And they have a little bit of a beanie, beanie look, mm -hmm. um, but really hard and yeah. As so there's I said. a saffron of. West African spices. Yeah, the rigidia of West African spices. There you go. Expensive. <laughs> Expensive. Yep. Okay, so I think it's time for us, after I have one little more bite of this amazing you. kilichi, mm. to get ourselves into the kitchen, see how our mm. palm fruit is doing, and move on to the next stage of cooking. See you there. Thank you. Mm. While we were discussing, our kitchen butterfly had already prepped the palm nut fruit by washing 
and boiling them in a pot for about 15 to 20 minutes. Next, in a smaller kitchen mortar, she will start the pounding process. So I'm pounding the flesh of the palm nuts because that's where we're going to get the essence, that creamy orange liquid that will form the basis of our banga soup. Once I bruise the flesh, I will soak it in a bit of water and then squeeze it out and that will take with it all the flavor and the essence of the palm nut and that will season and create this delicious pot of banga. This is how my mother did it and her mother before her pounding. And we're done. You look at it. You can see the fibers from the pulp. I'm going to scoop it out into some water. Just room temperature water, nothing too hot. Some people use warm water and essentially goes into this. And that's kind of going to leach out into the water. I'm going to run my hands through it to kind of really drag out. So it's not just oily water, but this thick essence. And I could do that here. And about how many palm kernels did you use or palm fruits? Oh my God. About I, a, uh, two pounds? No. I'd, just, I'd say just under two pounds. Love so you can that. see, you can see how thick it is. And we'll strain this and that will be the liquid for our banga soup, our seafood banga. I know you can do this several times, but each time the liquid will be thinner and will have less of the characteristic flavor, but yeah. So this is ready to be strained. Time to strain this fibery mulch into a huge sieve. And then add water to flush through. And is that water warm or? Just room temperature. Just to kind of rinse off the residue. And then it's squeeze, 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 squeeze. When you're done, you want to treat yourself, you can crack the nuts and get the palm kernel. And it has this coconutty flavor that we loved as children. Like we enjoyed the process of cracking the nuts and eating them. So yeah, we're done. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Isn't that amazing? Bright, beautiful orange color. Onions and yellow habaneros are blended together to create the base flavors. Right, Ozoz, this has been great watching you do that pounding. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for doing it. You're Instead welcome. of me doing it, you've done a sterling job at pounding that. And now it seems that we've got this beautiful pumpkin colored um, liquid here, thick, and it's going to go into the clay pot. The clay pot. Yes. Shall so I do that? Yes, Can please. I? Yes, please. Okay. Just put it all in. Put it all, all in. Oh, look at that. And it's all done. Awesome. Okay, now these beautiful prawns that you have here, you mentioned that your mum used to do something interesting with them. Yes. And that's um, getting the heads and blending them. Yes. Okay, so let's I'm see gonna, you do that. I'm just going to twist the heads off. Okay. Twist and pull. And twist these have all been pull. cleaned. Cleaned. And the, ready to go. The line has been removed and everything as you can see. In fact, the market women do it in an interesting way. They they use take, parts of the they take the sawtooth kind of central head thing and pull it through and kind of saw <coughs> through the the flesh to get yes, that line to get out. that shit line out. Yeah, there's a huge tiger prawns. They are okay. So, so into this the go into the blender. We've blender. also got some gorgeous crab, lobster, yeah. and tilapia. Yep, which we're gonna use, and then I'm just gonna top this with some water. Right, please. How much? Um, I'll let you know. At least to cover the prawns, the heads. At least to cover them. Okay. That's perfect. That's okay. So this is going to be blitzed. Right. One, One two, three, go. go. Oh, wow. Essence of 
The C. The C. Wow, look at that. And all we've got left there is just the crushed remnants of the head meat. Now on to the prep for the assorted seafood. Crabs need to be gutted and split. And one huge lobster is beheaded. Twist. And then cleaned out. And with great difficulty, split in half. Good old bash. Yes. Always does the trick. Tilapia is a fleshy fish and it's cut into three hearty pieces and we're ready. Our strained palm fruit mixture is set to boil and the onion and yellow habanero blend can be added now. I'm going to put some salt and some crayfish and we'll just let that boil boil for five, ten minutes, okay. then we can see how it's reduced and add the seafood. Wonderful. We mustn't forget the pureed prawn heads. They need to join the party too. And remember those exotic spices we spoke about? Now it's their turn to show off into the vigorously bubbling soup, the ataiko and rigije. A bruised bouquet garni of lemongrass. The licorice stick is added as well. And some salt. As well as some more crayfish. All this will bubble in friendship for another 10 to 15 minutes. All the beautiful seafood in now and a garnishing of bitter leaf. So our banga is ready. Ooh, look at that. Set it in a Going for the big tilapia. Mm -hmm. yes. And I've left it a little bit liquid because we're mm -hmm. Let me hold this up. drinking the soup. Yes, a lighter soup. A light. Go this ahead. is the tilapia. Yep. Mmm. Fresh. I know you got this this morning from the fish market. Just delightful. And you know what? The only way for me to get <laughs> and do justice to this prawn, mm -hmm. which also has an S on it, is to use your hand. Go for it. Use my hand and, and just I shall do hopefully that not too. burn my mouth. It's hot. Mmm. 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 So good. Tender. Mm. Delicious. I want to suck everything. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I'm just going to put this little victim on the side here. I don't even know how to start eating that crab on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's I think not. that's going to be left for Let's save that. private moments. Let's save that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some more fish. You must. It's just delicious. Well, again, Ozoz, I have to thank you so much for showing me how to make this amazing banga soup. I would never have believed that it could be quite so simple, yep. but also a bit complex when it comes to knowing the quantities, etc. And I hope everybody is enlightened and is going to go and try this. But for now, you can see we're quite busy having to finish the rest of this. Poor yes. us. Mm -hmm. It's a job someone's got to do. So from us today on Food Journey, it's bye-bye. Thank you so much, as well. Thank you. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye.